Welcome back to the Heads Up Show. And I'm not in the studio, that's for sure. I'm out here at the Charlotte Convention Center in North Carolina for the American Football Coaches Association, also known as the AFCA. This is the 2023 convention. We are out here in this unbelievably enormous venue with tens of thousands of people. This trade show is amazing because it has everything to do with the game of football from helmet technology, cleats, gloves, mouth guards, turf. Obviously, we're most concerned today about things involving the head up. So okay, so I'm here with Cord, a design engineer with Shut, and we're gonna talk about the F7 2.0 and maybe a couple of other things. Sure. So first off, let's just get to the obvious. What's the difference between the Shut F7 and the F7 2.0? Basically everything from the outer shell inward. So when you see the guards, the clips, um, all the plates and all that, that's all kind of been maintained. But everything from there inward um, is all is all different for this year in the 2.0. All right, so it's still the tectonic plates, yep. still inflatable padding? Yep. Okay. Yep. Single point of inflation this time though. So only the lateral liner inflates and the inflation point is down here kind of in the rear bumper. Interesting. So and that, that air bladder kind of goes along the entire perimeter. So you get this sort of like occipital lock area and all along the temples. So you go outer shell and then that sort of reflex structure that looks a lot like what we see in the Vice's helmet. So that structure and then the plates in there, that's where um, my counterpart Adam kind of worked on the, um, I guess the optimization, the design of those columns and kind of tuning that um, to work with the shut shell or the F7 shell. Nothing's changed, face mask compatibility, nope, all of that. No, nope, that's all been maintained. See, to me, that's a smart way to make improvements where you're not affecting the people who have all the past stuff, where now you're like, man, it's like your phone, right? Now you're getting a new charging wire, a new case. Correct. In yep. this case, it's all the yep, same It's all stuff, the same. Just, yep. uh, that's yep. cool. Same okay. ecosystem yeah. there for the parts. In fact, like when we're building our samples, even like here at the show, I'm taking F7s and converting them to 2.0s by just swapping what we call the brain. And I can kind of show that to you oh, here yeah, if you like as well. Oh yeah, let's do that. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. grab one. So this is this is what we call the brain. So this this is what makes the F7 2.0 unique compared to the previous model. So okay. like I said, exterior shell outward, everything is is the same as it's been. But but once you get inside, this entire kind of assembly here is yeah. what what makes it unique. You know, this is this is not your grandpa's helmet, right? No, yeah, it's and very cool. Just looking at this, you you realize you're holding a piece of technology that just happens to be a helmet. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So it kind of comes with like built-in shims. I see. So if you got oh, okay. if you got an oval head, right, you're probably yeah. not going to want these in the temple. Like yep, you have them available in the rear, the top, and the temples. So it's it's a similar to the Vice's 2.0 with those Delta pods. Very much so. Yep, yep okay. that's the idea. Yep. And so oh. we ship them with all those installed. So it's kind of up to you, you put it on, if it's too tight in the temples, you can remove them. You also have air, so that, again, you can see the air channel yeah. runs all the way along this whole perimeter. Super cool. So you have a lot of adjustability, both in like, you know, removable parts, if you're if you're not a fan of air, yeah. uh, but you also have that backed up with air beneath it. So a and lot I of see, modularity. I see, it says right on here, quarter inch, so they probably come in different things. Correct, yep. Yep. yeah. We got uh, a quarter inch, cool. we got a three eighths. Yeah. Um, at, at, again, you can do that in both these top locations. We yeah. actually have one in the, this sort of like side upper area. Okay. It's not as common we find for heads with that shape, so we don't ship that one in the helmet, but it gotcha. is available as a fit kit. Okay, well, good to know. I mean, you guys watch out. You know we're going to stock these things. Cord, thanks so much. For yeah, your absolutely. Time. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, it, yeah, okay. yeah. Likewise. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. All right. So I am with Steve Seismic Headgear. You guys know this by now. This is the X7 soft shell helmet, and then I have this thing, which I don't know much about, so I need you Steve, to- Steve, it's the you. X7C. It's on the back. <laughs> it, it sure is, man. It's right there. It sure is. Tell me, is to me, this seems for the people who maybe don't want to wear the full shell. Is yeah, that right? so uh, we've been out in the field for about a year now, maybe even 18 months. Uh, yeah. We've been field testing the different concepts. So last year in particular, we found that on the seven on seven and the flag game in particular, yeah. um, not, everybody, not everybody wants to wear full coverage. Okay. And usually it's female athletes, as you know, female flag and female seven on seven is growing like crazy, particularly yes. flag. Um, and there's a definite attitude around that sport, right? People have hairstyles, the girls want to wear their hair in a certain way in particular. Right. So we found out that uh, we, we produce, if we produce the headband yep. with the same technology, five star rated Virginia Tech technology as the X7, this could be a winner, not only for the female game, but also for guys who frankly have got great hair as well and they want to show some attitude That's too. Right. Why are they becoming more and more popular? Because the truth is they are gaining, is it popularity or is it a necessity or both? Do you know what? 
it's popularity becoming a necessity. I think it's, it's, there's, there's a definite um, line between the two, but it's a blurred line. So flagging seven on seven is getting more and more competitive. More and more athletes are joining those games. Yes. So obviously there are more incidental contacts. This yeah. isn't full contact, but stuff happens on the field, right? So this could be an elbow to the head. It could be a head to head. It could be head to ground. Gotcha. But more stuff is happening around those games. So the soft shell is a really good way that athletes can become a little bit safer. Um, and honestly, I mean, we've been to a lot of flag competitions. Um, guys, girls, they go crazy. They want to yeah. win tournaments, right? Oh, yeah. And the players are getting bigger and faster. So if you're running at like, you know, 15 miles an hour and you hit something, whether yeah. it's an elbow or the head or the ground, you're better off having a soft shell on, right? You know, soft shells are being mandated in certain places now. They, we feel they're going to be mandated uh, eventually nationwide. Right. Uh, but right now, certain states are mandated and that will continue to grow. Myself and our director of new business, Rod Trafford, went to the, uh, the equipment managers convention in West Palm Beach last year, 22. And we had a lot of interest from NFL teams. Um, and it, we were just really there to learn. We were, we were kind of giving this to the equipment manager and saying, hey, do you see this fitting into your overall health, head health strategy for the right. team? And they were like, okay, yeah. You know what, for OTAs, Fast Fridays, light training days, exactly. we could definitely use a soft shell. So let me, let me ask you about the actual uh, shell itself. So yeah. this seems like these are molded one piece. Yep. So as it comes out the mold, if you take these inner pads out, okay. it comes out as a single unit. No okay. chin strap, no inner pads. Each unit comes with two sets of inner pads. There are four inner pads in, in each shell. All right. The blue ones are thicker, therefore if you put four blue pads in the shell, yep. it goes down to maybe a 20 inch head circumference. I see. If you put all gray in, it goes to about a 24 inch head circumference on this particular model. Okay. We also do the XL. The XL goes from 24 to 26 inches in circumference. So really this would be everything from like a, maybe an extra small to a large. Right, yeah. And so then depending one, on your Right, head. right, one footprint, two sets of pads. And the great thing is players have different configurations. Super light, I mean crazy. Light. Um, eight ounces, where I'm from that's 230 grams. Yeah. That's... That, you're gonna throw up, it's gonna come down like this. <laughs> pretty, <laughs> pretty much, light, right? man. It doesn't look bad. Do you know what it does? Honestly, I mean, we worked, we worked hard on this, right? The, the, on the, this passes the mirror test. Exactly. Right? When, when the kids put it on, when the players put it on, yeah. they don't want to take it off, honestly. And, it it and passes right? the mirror test. And that's, it can be the safest helmet, the best performing. If it doesn't look good, they're not going to wear it, that's right? That's it, man. Well, I appreciate the time and all the I appreciate info, you guys. I'm sure our guys are appreciate hearing all about it. Thanks so much, man. <laughs> good okay. seeing you, Steve. Thank good you. seeing you. You too, Steve. All right, everybody. I am here at the Light Helmet booth with Nick. Nick, tell me about these helmets because it's not all just about the name, or is it? Well, it's about a lot of different things, right? So, you know, helmets have come a long way over the last 15 or 20 years, but it's really been more evolution than revolution. And what we've got here is a light LS2. It weighs about 40% less than traditional helmets. It's made a composite shell. Uh, it's got some unique foams on the inside. It's resizable. It's Virginia Tech five-star rated. All three versions of it are. Um, it really gives you a precision fit with the way that we can put the pads inside with the D3O pads and a shim kit. It accommodates cool visors. Um, we've had some roundabouts with the NFL. We disagree with their testing protocol. If we add weight to this, it does extremely well. And we're not gonna add weight because we see what weight has done this year in a lot of high profile concussions. So we feel we're ahead of the curve and uh, athletes like Cam Rising at the University of Utah have worn this helmet this year to great fanfare and with great luck and we've got them in about 25 D1 schools right now. Wow. And I think this is what people get confused about because at first glance it looks so simple. Can it be that easy? Well, it is. And it's not because we're smart, it's right. because the U.S. military is smart. So over the years they spent billions and billions of dollars to develop the modern era combat helmet, which consists of a composite shell, two types of foam as a liner, and that's exactly what we've done. Now granted, we're not trying to stop a rifle round or a piece of shrapnel, so the shell is designed for multiple impacts over and over and over. The liner is thicker and designed to rebound, 
And people say, gosh, it looks like styrofoam. Well, if you take any auto race helmet, any combat helmet, motorcycle helmet, and you cut through the cloth that makes it look nice on the inside, you see this type of foam. And it's very resilient. It's closed cell, so it doesn't smell. Temperature doesn't affect it. So when you're playing in 20 degrees below zero in the frozen tundra, or you're playing at a 10,000 foot elevation and it's 105 degrees out, the foam maintains its protective quality. You don't have to put air in it, take air out of it, or expect the player to. And it's simple design, really consists of a couple components. The yeah. shell, the foam liner, the fitment pads, the mask. You have a selection of face masks. The face masks, are these titanium? Are they lightweight? Are they hollow tube? It's a, it's a great question. So most of the face masks right now are steel or titanium. Okay. And the fact that we just keep gaming these tests by building heavier helmets so that when the pneumatic ram hits it, it doesn't move as much, and then a bunch of people make money at these labs is ridiculous. Now, I'll give Virginia Tech credit because their test is more indicative of what happens on the field, yeah. but all of these tests need to be reviewed, and the one that's done the best job is Noxie. They finally have gone and said the use standard is three and a half pounds or less. But of course, we've got some friends that sell helmets as well that aren't too excited about that because we have the only helmet that has the three and a half pound weight or below. Wow, okay. Well, you got your work cut out for you, but you are a hardworking group of guys. You're getting a name out there. You're showing that the light helmet brand is a force to be reckoned with, right? And I think eventually the technology is gonna get embraced and celebrated and hopefully shared and it's going to be out there more and more on the field and if you want to check out more of light please check out the description of the video i'll have all their stuff in there thanks so much for your time nick thanks for having us we love the game of football cool. thank you all right so here we are with tony at guardian with guardian caps i know that you guys have seen this on the hard knocks this year Tell me, what are we looking at? Yeah, so the Guardian cap is a one-size-fits-all, lightweight uh, helmet cover to reduce impact during practice. So it reduces about a third of the impact, um, 20 to 33%, depending on where the impact occurs and, and how hard. Um, really focusing on those repetitive um, you know, blows for those big guys, O-line, D-line, linebackers, tight ends. And that's, that's where the NFL mandated them this past year yeah. for those position groups. Um, but pretty simple, uh, you know, obviously one size fits all, lightweight, and um, also good for body blows, helmets and knees and hips, and oh, quarterbacks, yeah. if their hands kind of wrong place, wrong time, yeah. on, on a helmet, you don't have that hard helmet. May I? Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I'll tell you, when I came over to the booth earlier, I was looking at them, it's a misconception what you see on TV. This is crazy light. And there, we do have, so the NFL model, um, we added a little bit of material, so we had about five ounces, but yeah. it's, it's still really lightweight. Yeah. Um, we're offering those for college linemen, um, but the major we have probably 250 colleges. I'd say 20 of them have the NFL version on their linemen, gotcha. and then the rest, like Clemson is still using this, this version, because gotcha. they've been using it since 2013. They've been happy with it. Um, so you really, you know, high school, we have youth, through college in this cap in this yeah, model, yeah. Um, and they may make fun of the look for you know a practice or two, yeah. um, but they forget they're there, and that's that's kind of what our goal is: forget it's there, business as usual. Yep. Tackling technique is still key. Yeah. Um, it's just a piece of the puzzle to help reduce some of that impact. Yeah. Um, you know, and help, well, help protect. It may not more. pass the mirror test, but it'll help you remember who you are when you look in the mirror. Yeah. And like you said, it's it's not intended for then going on TV and being in the limelight, it's right. for the low blows, repetitive over and over and over. Absolutely. You know? How does the general public get their hands on one of these? Uh, they can reach out to us, guardiansports.com. Um, you know, they're available on our web store uh, and we have bulk pricing available as well for teams. You know, as far as attaching this to the helmet and then detaching it, what kind of time does that take? It's pretty quick. It takes about 30 to 45 seconds. So okay. it's just these four straps that slide through the face mask in the front. Yep. And then this strap in the back is adjustable depending on the size of I the see. helmet. I appreciate your time. And for the people out there, parents in particular, they're the ones that are going to want this. Check out Guardian Cap. Keep your kids safe. Thank you. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. Okay. All right, so now that I'm back in the studio, I have some questions for you and let's go in order. So first up, the F7 2.0. I wanna know, what do you think about the idea of those shims? The fact that those pads go in and out over the existing pads, I actually think that's pretty cool. They kind of took the technology from the Vices Delta pods 
but they applied it to already existing pads. I don't know, you could argue it's something else to maintain and keep and have in your gym bag, but I don't know, it comes with the helmets, right? One single inflation point, I actually think that's great. Best part about the whole idea of doing a revamp or a 2.0 version is that it doesn't require you to buy anything else. So if you had an F7 that was three, four years old already and you wanted to get a 2.0, you can still use your face mask, you can still use your chin strap, your visor, all the other stuff without actually having to buy new things. Next up, the soft shell helmets. These are not that new, but they're becoming more and more mandated or just more and more popular. It's coming y'all, like it's becoming a thing and maybe it makes sense. It's something that Seismic has done a really great job with explaining why with some of their real like nice high-end videos. If you wanna geek out on that, I suggest you do go to the Seismic website. I think that they're gonna be mandated in seven on seven in youth leagues. I bet it, it is coming. I see the data and I see the comments and um, the meetings and the forums that are happening. Next up, the light helmet. Now, this is probably the most, I don't know, polarizing thing that we talked about at the trade show. It seems that people either love them or hate them. They're crazy light. And if you are on the camp that weight matters, then these have to be fantastic helmets because when you hold them in your hands, it's like, my goodness, these are definitely more rigid of a shell, that composite shell, and also that padding that looks like styrofoam. It's way more advanced than just styrofoam. Uh, but the truth is, it is more of a, of a rigid feel. I think that they have their work cut out for them. They're up, they're up against some stiff competition. I think for youth players, they have a real, real shot at being successful. Um, only time will tell, right? And then the fourth up are the Guardian caps. So the Guardian caps, again, they're nothing really new. What is new about them is how much you're gonna see them. They're mandating them. I mean, you saw them on Hard Knocks this year, you know, Dan Campbell and the guys, they were joking about, you know, they may not be the most pleasing things to look at, but it's irrelevant. These don't have to pass the mirror test. They are there for two reasons. The first reason is to slow down the low impacts that happen again and again, repetitive. And then the other thing is, let's not forget, they protect the helmet. So some of these teams and some of the teams you're on, you know, you're bashing your helmets during all these practices where if you just put a lightweight cap on them to protect the shell, especially painted and chrome helmets, yeah, there's probably something to it, right? If we want to protect the game of football and we want it to be around, then we can't be pretending that it's not a dangerous game. So to me, the more technology and the more competition between these companies that are out there, it just is better for all the players. So thank you so much for sticking around. Join us here on this show every week when we build helmets and we have guests and we play with field use and collectible helmets and all that good stuff. And if you made it to the end of this video, you're a rock star. Till next time, cheers.